Hello children, welcome back to 8th standard biology class. In the last class, we have discussed about fertilizers and manure and the differences between fertilizers and manure. And in today's class, let us learn about the advantages of using manure and the other important tasks are agricultural practices such as agriculture and protection from weeds in the class now. What are the advantages of using manure? You know now what is a manure is. It is, a, it is a, an organic substance produced from plant and animal waste. Let us try to understand the advantages of using manure. What advantage is there? In the last class you have learnt about the differences between manure and fertilizers also and in today's class let us see adding manures advantages of manures what are they if we add manure to the field what advantages a farmer can get let us see you know that manure is a natural substance and it can easily decay that is prepared from decomposition of plants or animal based on so that First of all, it is harmless to the environment. Not only that, these manures, using manures, increases the humus content in the soil. You know what is humus means? The organic matter present in the top soil is called humus. This adding manure increases humus in the soil. In the sense, when the humus is more in the soil, its water holding capacity also will be more. So, first of all, manure increases water holding capacity of the soil. And not only that, this adding manure also loosens the soil well. Not only that means soil aeration increases and the soil becomes porous. So, this is another advantage of using organic manure. What it is? The soil becomes porous when farmers add manure to the soil. Means soil aeration increases. Why it is essential? For exchange of gases becomes very easy when the soil becomes porous or soil aeration increases. That is possible by adding manure. And one more important advantage is the soil contains many soil organisms. You have learnt already in your previous class. Earthworms are there, millipeds are there, ants are there and even large number of microbes also there. These soil organisms will increase in the soil when manure is added to the soil. So adding manure increases the number of friendly microbes also and earthworms and other soil organisms also. It is very essential for improving the soil texture and manure also improves the soil texture also. These are the main advantages of using organic manure. So better than chemical fertilizers, organic manure can be used because it is harmless also as I told, it does not pollute our soil and water. So it is more advantageous than using chemical fertilizers. Let us go to another important agricultural practice called irrigation. What do you understand from the term irrigation? If you sow a seed without water, it cannot germinate. So in the dry soil, sow some seeds and wait for some days. These seeds never germinate. Why? There must be moisture in the soil for the germination of seeds. So under dry conditions, seeds cannot germinate. Watering is very essential for plants. Just like we animals need water, plants also need water. In large quantity, some plants may need water. In little bit smaller quantity, some plants may need. So the time and frequency of watering may differ. Then what do we call this process of watering the plants? And the, as the name tells, the process of 
water in the plants or supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. And why is watering essential? First of all, water is very essential for germination of seeds. Just like our body, 70% of our body contains water. The same way, 90% plant body contain 90% of water. So, for germination of seeds, water is essential. Not only that, water is very essential to absorb the nutrients by plants. Means, plants absorb mineral nutrients dissolved in water, which is present in the soil. So, if these mineral nutrients have to be absorbed, sufficient water or moisture must be there in the soil. So, watering is very essential for the absorption of mineral nutrients from the plants. From the soil, the absorbed nutrients are, sorry, dissolved nutrients present in water are absorbed by the roots of the plants from the soil. So, watering is essential. And one more important thing you have to notice, this water protects the plants from frost and hot air currents also for healthy growth of plants and to maintain moisture in the soil, watering the plants is very essential. This process of supplying water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. So let us see what are the methods of irrigation and the traditional methods and the modern methods of irrigation and what advantages are there from modern methods let us learn in the next topic. So irrigation is very essential means watering is very essential for the plants. Here I have explained you already just once glance over the importance of water for the plants. It is very important for proper growth and development of the plants just like us and it is essential for the germination of seeds. Under dry conditions, seeds do not germinate and mineral nutrients dissolved in water only can be absorbed. So, and it is sent to or transported to different parts also. So that from the soil, plants absorb dissolved mineral nutrients through the medium of water. So water is very essential and water also protects the crop plants from frost and hot air currents. So for why irrigation is essential? To maintain moisture of the soil and for the healthy crop growth, we have to water the fields regularly. And what do we call this process? The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. And what are the sources of irrigation? You have already learnt in your previous class. Which are the water sources? Wells, tubules, dams, rivers, ponds, lakes. These are the important sources of water which the farmers use for irrigation purposes. Which are they? Wells, tubers, lakes, ponds, rivers, dams and canals. Now let us see some traditional methods of irrigation which the farmers use. And what disadvantage is there from these traditional methods? Say the water from these wells, canals, tube wells, ponds etc. is lifted by many methods. What traditional methods were used by the or now also in some areas farmers are using these traditional methods. Which are the end? These, in these methods they use cattle or human labor. Very cheaper but less efficient. Consumes time also and human energy also. So maybe cheaper but less efficient. Which are those traditional methods of watering the plants. One is more system pulley. Using a pulley water is drawn from the wells and then it is used for watering or irrigation purpose. Then another method is chain pump. You will see the picture in the next slide. Chain pump. It is nothing but look at here. This first traditional method the farmer use is a mold system. Using a 
a pulley. Pulley system it is. He draws water from the pulley and pours it down. You imagine how much of time it consumes. And look at another traditional method, chain pump. You can see a long chain fixed to there, and this chain is pulled, and the pulley rotates, and water is drawn from the sources. So that this is another method, traditional method of irrigation. And look at here, Ramat liver system it is. Here is a cattle which is used to operate the pulley here. Sorry. Liver system here. To operate the liver system, cattle is used here. Energy of the cattle is used. So that this liver functions and water is drawn. So this is nothing but Rahat or liver system. And look at this. They clean in our area. In Kannada, what we call Yeta. Yeta Niravari, you might have heard. Say, this is called Dekli. Which is, this side it is pulled. And from this side, when water comes up in the buckets or pots, it is poured with the help of a labor here. So, human labor is used here. And this is called Dekli. So, these are the four traditional methods usually used by the farmers. Which are they? Mot. Pulley is used. Chain pump. Or as the name tells, a chain is pulled and pulley rotates so that water is lifted. And here, Raha, liver system. By the operation of the liver, water is lifted. Cattle labor is used here. And this is Dekli or Yeta, which is used to draw water from the well. In all these traditional methods, Cattle or human labor is used very cheap but less efficient method and you can see here wastage of water is there in this method. So nowadays farmers are using modern methods of irrigation such as sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation. As the name tells water is sprinkled and drip irrigation drop by dropper drop water is allowed directly to the roots. So these systems are very efficient and saves water also. Wherever water is less available, these systems are very very advantageous. Let us see what is the sprinkler method and where it is used. Look at here. In this picture you can see the sprinklers. How it is connected? See, there are Perpendicular pipes here with rotating nozzles, you can see. Perpendicular pipes with rotating no nozzles. And that is fixed to a main pipe. And how it works? When water is allowed in the main pipe through the pump, what happens? Water escapes from the nozzle and it gets sprinkled over the crops. You imagine how nice it is and how neatly it saves water. Very efficient method it is. So this is very useful in which areas the uneven land. The land is uneven and there is no sufficient water. There all the sprinkler system is very efficient. You might have seen the sprinklers in coffee plantations and lawns. Easily it can be watered. Coffee plantations and lawns. We use sprinkler irrigation systems which saves very efficient method which saves water also and human labor also. So this is one of the important modern method of irrigation. And look at another irrigation modern method of irrigation called drip system. See as the name tells drop by drop water falls to the roots only directly to the roots. The name itself tells you drip, drop by drop, water is allowed to the roots directly. This is called drip system. Again, very efficient method. Why no wastage of water? Wherever water availability is very less, this system can be used. Nowadays, most of the farmers are using sprinkler and drip irrigation systems. So, this drip irrigation systems are usually used to grow fruit plants also, trees also and many such plants 
crop plants can be grown by watering through a drip irrigation system. So these are the modern methods. Now let us see the next important part of the agricultural practice. Another important agricultural practice, protection from weeds. Have you ever heard the term weeds? What do you mean by weeds? You might have observed a crop field with paddy. For example, if you visit a paddy field, you will see other than paddy plants also, not only paddy, with them some other undesirable or unwanted plants may be there in the paddy field. What do we, not only paddy, if you visit any crop field, other than that crop, you see some unwanted plants. We call those unwanted plants in the crop fields weeds. So what are weeds? Weeds are the unwanted plants in the crop fields. What happens if weeds grow in the field? They must be removed from time to time. Why should we remove? What will happen if weeds grow? You know that crop plants need mineral nutrients they absorb from the soil. Here, when weeds are there, these weeds also compete with the crop plants to get the nutrients, water, space, sunlight, etc. So that crop plants will not grow healthy. So they affect the growth of crop plants. Because of this, they must be removed from time to time. So whenever these weeds grow in the crop fields, they must be removed. So this process of removal of weeds from the fields is called weeding. What is the process called weeding? What is weeding? It is the removal of weeds from the crop fields. It is weeding. What methods? Why is it necessary? Weeding is necessary since weeds compete with crop plants for water, nutrients, space and light so that crop plants will not grow healthily. So they must be removed. What do we call the removal of weeds? Weeding and this process of weeding, some weeds even, they interfere in harvesting also. Even after harvesting, we, you can see these weeds, if it is not removed time to time, they become poisonous for you, even humans also and animals also. So they must be removed from time to time. Which is the right time to remove the weeds? The right time means before they produce flowers and seeds, they must be removed. Why you know? Otherwise next season, again their number increases. So before they produce flower senses, weeds must be removed. So what are the methods used for removing weeds? One is manual method. We can uproot them using our hands. Or we can cut it to the ground level. Or so that using the instruments called kurpi that can be cut up to the ground level or can be uprooted. And you know that in the first topic you have learnt about tilling. Tilling also removes weeds. So before sowing seeds, farmers undertake this activity of tilling. Means tilling also uproot the, uproots the weeds so that they dry up and die later. So tilling is another method of removing weeds. So tilling and manually removing using hands or uprooting. The weeds or by cutting the weeds up to the ground level is one of the methods of using weeds. And another method is there using what are the other methods of removing weeds. Let us learn in the next class. The method of spraying weedicides. What is a weedicide? It is a chemical which kills only weeds. So what is a weedicide? It's a chemical which kills only weeds. It does not affect the crop plants. So farmers can spray some weedicides. One example is 2,4-D. It's a chemical weedicide which kills the weeds. Whenever weeds are there, when before they produce flowers and seeds, weedicides will be sprayed and weeds are removed. So this is another method.
method which can be controlled by spraying weedicides. An example of weedicide is 2,4-D. Let us learn more about the other methods of harm, agricultural practices such as harvesting, storage, etc. And the remaining part about this removal of weeds in the next class. See you then.